Hey guys, this is Kyle from InvestShare. I want to go over the market conditions that we were talking about yesterday in yesterday's video and how both those scenarios that we were talking about played out perfectly if you waited for the right change of character or the right price, um, price action structure. Um, I'm going to show you how you could have shorted this move if you didn't already. And um, we're going to go over as well the current market conditions because I'm getting a lot of messages right now about whether or not people should be fearful, uh, you know, preparing to sell or if you're preparing for a good long opportunity. And honestly, right now, we don't have an answer for either, but I can show you what I would be looking for if I want to short, uh, do a, a larger short because this could be the start of a bigger drop or this could be you know, a pullback preparing for a larger pump. So let's go into the charts really quick and I'm gonna map out what I see and uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this. So let's get into the charts. All right, cool. So yesterday, we were looking at the price action when it was currently at this double bottom structure right here. And when I, like during the video, we saw it was starting to play out and we just wanted to wait for a candle to close around here with a target of the structural value area high right here, where this red line is. Um, if you are wondering where this line comes from, if you zoom out a bit and you see how we have this formational structure here, Whenever you're able to draw a structure like this, you can actually pull a fixed range volume profile and you can give yourself an idea of the strongest point of control area and the strongest value area high and the strongest value area low within this defined structure. Um, of course, you can pull them within each of these areas as well, uh, but this is, the this is the area that matters the most. It's the macro structure that's gonna have a greater influence over the price action. So, the scenario that we we're talking about before, we wanted to have a change of character before entering, and that change of character would actually would allow Fibonacci traders to give themselves a target if you're in and out really, qu really quickly. And so, as for example, you had the change of character here when this candle closed, and at that moment, it became a valid time to pull a Fibonacci retracement tool from the most recent high to the most recent low. And we saw that it hit the golden pocket perfectly. And if you didn't get out, then you have this evolving momentum warning you that if this breaks, you better get out. Um, so it really all, it all depends on how you're trading this move because we had a um, value area here as well. Now, if you jumped in here, you could have targeted the value area high as a value area trader, or you could have targeted the, point of, uh, the golden pocket just to be safe. And we can see that we had broad momentum after we had the pullback and this was honored as support still after we broke it as resistance. And then we hit the value area high target here. Now for a short opportunity, there was two. So we had a double top forming on this area right here. And at the same time, we lost the uptrending momentum. So once this candle closed, we had a break of structure right below this area here. So once we had a candle of close below this area, no matter how it closed, this could have been a great opportunity so long as it didn't eat too much of the risk to reward ratio when you're looking for a short. So you could have put your stop loss above this most recent swing high. And I'll put that up right now just so you can show you how I'd trade it. So going on the candle close on the 15 minute time frame, stop loss here, and you target right down here. Now, for me personally, I wouldn't have taken this short because the risk to reward ratio was a one to 1.32. Um, now the great opportunity that occurred is we kind of fractaled this double top with this here, right? So we had a double top here and it brought us to the neckline of a larger double top structure here. And the confirmation for this move was right here when we had this price action dip down below this neckline of the double top and we came up we had it honored as resistance the moment we had this candle close below the area where we had the bounce come up and retrace it as resistance so this this candle here became the confirmation for the short now you could pull the um the measurable target from the double top by basically getting this trend line and finding the candle close in the 15 minute time frame to the, the other candle kind of close on the right side of the double top, and then grab another trend line from that moment and drag it down to the neckline here. And then you basically bring it below the support, and then you have yourself the measurable target. 
And it, it looks like people have taken profits here and in confluence with that, there was a support bounce off this uptrending level of support here. So some people likely got out at this area. Um, and then it just decided to continue to drop. But anyways, so in this scenario, you basically would have put your short from this moment, stop loss above the most recent swing high. If you are someone who struggles to getting their stop loss hit all the time, but it still ends up going your direction, I recommend using the average true range where this little red line is instead. And it would have given you a little bit of wiggle, wiggle room um, and it could have prevented any like, you know, wick coming up to knock you out. But this would have been a really good play right here. And then basically this was your your target. You'd be targeting the uptrending level support. And this would have been a one to two. So this is definitely a trade that I would recommend people to take in a scenario like this. And the fact that the stop loss was below 1%, you could have ag actually added some leverage as well. Um, all right, cool. So what we should be thinking about now. So we had a, the price action go all the way down and actually like just demolish through the point control and normally it's honored as a strong level of support and resistance um it still can it's just right now it's just that last candle we kind of melted through it and we bounced off of the value area low for the the macro structure here and now what we got to fear is if price action comes up and we end up honoring this uptrending level of support as a form of resistance and we won't get that confirmation unless we have price action come down and close below this most recent swing here. And we could actually have ourselves a really good short opportunity, but we do have a barrier right in our face, which is still the value area low. We could end up building um, a reversal structure here, right? So in my opinion, because of the, the buy shadow wick being so close to the value area low, I'd be very careful shorting this. You might have to babysit the trade for a bit until we have a price action close below the value area low. And so just set your alarms at critical levels of support like the value area low here. Look to your left, see if there's any other confluence with this. Uh, we do have some confluence of support here. I'll press control J, or sorry, alt J. Uh, so where this uh, area here, we got to watch this along the way down. And now let's look a little further. So we do have um, relatively steep momentum with this. So let's take a trend line, pull it through here. So I'm thinking that we're actually going to continue to drop within the next hour. Um, so we see price action come down and maybe we'll build a reversal pattern. And if we do build a reversal pattern, if we drop within this hour, um, we would be looking for a break of this level after the momentum has been broken. And we're looking for structure to define a good long opportunity. And when we're longing, we're we'll watching this uptrending level of support potentially act as a strong level of resistance. Um, so right now I am thinking that we're likely going to consolidate and volume is actually likely going to drop until the consolidation builds a structure that will break. And once we move out of that valley area, we'll move back up into the previous valley areas, or we're gonna move down and uh, we can actually drop as low as you know 63,000 for the first strong level of support. And we can go down as uh, lower to 61,360. Um, a lot of people are looking for liquidity to be swept around 59,000. So maybe that liquidity is going to be swept before the halving event occurs and we start pumping to the upside. I want to show you guys as well what it looks like on the macro. Like where are we relative to the previous cycles? So you can have, um, you know, a better headspace about this drop. Maybe it's just a way of um, knocking some people out before we start going to the upside because if you can take out some traders before you start to pump, there's less competition when it comes to taking profits. Um, at least that's how the market makers think. So if I zoom out on the daily time frame, and I'm gonna apologize for the noise because I've got a, a trade a lot, so I got some trend lines all over the place. So where we are basically in terms of price action relative to the previous cycles, we are you know, trying to honor the previous all-time high as a form of support through this consolidation. And that's basically what happened around here in the last bull run. So when we had this structural break, right, we had the confirmation bounce here. Ours occurred 
right here for the bull run. You know, a lot of people are calling this the bull run just starting now, but honestly, if the better you are as a trader, you're going to realize the bull run started around like 25,000, not um, where we are currently. So we are, tr we are at this moment, we're trying to capture this level, this previous all time high as a form of support. And we built like a large, you know, double top type structure. And there was a, I remember at the time people thinking that the bull run was over. And of course, we you know, we created the, another high and the real run started. We're just basically, it just sprints until it gets too tired. And then we have a huge collapse like we always do. Um, so that's what we are looking at now. It looks a lot more bullish than the previous time we consolidated. Um, we're kind of building like a pennant like type structure. I know my trend lines now after the price section that, that just occurred, we can adjust some of these trend lines a little bit. Um, and I'll adjust them for the next video for you guys. But uh, but yeah, relative to the last cycle, this is where we are. And if we go into the on-chain data, um, we at that time had about 95... We had, well, at, the, at that time, we had 100% of supply in a profit, and a lot of people were starting to escape the market, and new buyers were coming in. And that's exactly what's happening on chain. We're seeing long-term holders are starting to leave, and we have some new buyers coming in, and then the retail FOMO pumps up the rest of the market, basically. Um, and then we kind of dipped down to about... You know, we dipped down to about 92% of the supply being in profit, and right now, if we go where we are now... We had about, at one moment, 92% of supply and a profit after we reached the all-time high. And we're right now, we're around 97% of the supply and profit. So it's kind of consolidating within that area as people are escaping, taking profits. That's why we have these harsh drops. And then we have um, a slower climb from the shorter-term holders coming in. Um, so we are, we are basically maybe a couple weeks away, maybe even less, uh, from a large move potentially to the upside if history repeats. Of course, that doesn't mean enter a long right now. We need structural confluence to validate that first in case maybe something's different this cycle. We can't just assume that history is going to repeat every single time. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm looking at if we do break this and we end up having a new a higher high, I'm looking at a target of around 165000 for the next all-time high. Um so there's nothing much more than that that I've got to say, guys. We just need to wait for a little bit more structure to tell us where we're going. But based on this momentum, I think that we're just going to consolidate a little bit longer. Uh, we're going to probably drop for the next hour again and maybe have a reversal pattern. We'll look for some bullish divergence on the lower time frames and scale up to the higher time frames. And then once we get that change of character, we can jump in on a, a, a long position and I'll give you guys the signal inside the Discord community and we'll ride it up together. Um, and if we end up breaking the previous high from a result of this recovery, then I'm going to be committing quite a bit of funds to this. Uh, I recently closed a trade that allowed me to gain about 20 Bitcoin from it. So I want to see if I can get myself a little bit more before the end. Um, but uh, I think we're, yeah, we're just about ready for a potential reversal. Um, but yeah, guys, reach out to me if you need any help with anything. Have yourself an amazing day. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate the amount of subscribers I got from the last video. We only had about 192 views from the last video, but um, we gained over 20 subscribers from it. So I really, really appreciate your help. Um, you guys have yourself an awesome day, and thanks for watching. Bye. Hey, yo, I'm all about the crypto. In case you don't know, it's the haste of inflation, the crazy sweep on the nation. No baby, every blockchain and created the same. But the learning curve feels like a bullet to the brain.